Good kitten internet. Meow. Uh, where we last left off, things happened. Things. Plot things. Yeah, I also opened the console to pause the game. Mm -hmm. Where do you think I learned it from? <laughs> So we have a bunch of things that we have quest-wise now. When did Star UI add the tabs? I just Those not have been there all along. Yeah, just me not noticing. Got it. All right. So we have Voli Epsilon, which is the power that comes from the artifact that we just gained. Presumably given that I don't think we had any others that we hadn't already gotten. Right, because if you did, you would get that quest right. on entry the system, not on ta yep. taking off. Um, we have the quest with Vladimir for finding more artifacts. You know, shooting down a capital ecliptic ship with my class A ship, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, I did that on my second character. We need to speak with Walter. And yes. many other people. And you had suggested that I should start with speaking with Walter. Holy sh... I ain't never getting used to that. Oh. Right. I was afraid you were going to bring that up again. Very well. Let's see if I embarrass myself or not. My colleagues... I venture out into the darkness of space once again. Many of you have expressed concern. At my age, you say? Surely the risks are too great. Surely Sebastian Banks has earned a rest. Nonsense, I say. To go out into the unknown, to brave the possibility of never coming back, to ignite the spark of hope that humanity will find answers out there in the stars? That is all I have ever wanted. If this last expedition is my time, then I say, I have been fortunate. I have been fortunate to leave, surrounded by people who could not be more different from one another, but who share a common purpose. That, dare I say, I am fortunate my soul has a home it can always come back to. And that, was the last thing Sebastian Banks ever said in the Lodge before he disappeared. And Constellation has been waiting for him to come home ever since. Hmm. See, that just makes me think that maybe Sebastian Banks found the Starborn. Yeah, that's actually what I was about to say. I'm uh, pretty sure that's more of a Starborn thing. I'm gonna ask first about the ambush. Not my first time in a hostile negotiation, as you well know. Admittedly, I usually know more about who I'm facing off against. I'm very interested in what Noel can learn from the scans. The technology on that ship was impressive, to say the least. If there's a chance, we could learn enough to duplicate some of it. Then Stroudeckland would be the leader again. Mm -hmm. There's the entrepreneur I know. If it all quirk. I got to where I am by taking advantage of opportunities, no matter where I find them. Might as well make the most of this crazy situation. So, what other work you... No, I want to look at... My... I want you to know I was Nothing. very impressed with your work back on Neon. Are you well enough to know this feeling like it's going to lead you somewhere? <laughs> There's no fooling you. Don't worry, this is a much lower stake opportunity. Nice. My Star Yard's been having a little trouble getting our next project off the ground. Ah. I need someone capable and decisive to step in and steer it in the right direction. <laughs> Interested? <coughs> Tea goes in the stomach, not the lungs. <coughs> so this is the quest that you've told me about. Mm -hmm.
As you know, I'm a busy man, running a company, helping to manage Constellation's financial needs. It doesn't leave me with much time to get into the weeds with every little business venture that comes my way. Besides, think of this as a rare opportunity to help shape the future of a major consumer brand. Well, whatever it is, I'm in. I'm sure it'll be fine. Love the enthusiasm. I knew there was a reason I picked you to help with this project. It's a new ship. We want to diversify our fleet. Now, I don't know why the people I pay very handsomely to come up with new designs can't seem to get out of the R&D phase. And frankly, I don't care. I just want someone, you, to go there and show them how it's done. You must have known I dabble in ship design, huh? I did not. Part of the problem <laughs> is that my designers seem to be having trouble agreeing on a plan. I should mention that you're not there to make design decisions. You're there to get the project back on track and help guide them. So, ideally, you're not adding to the problem. Uh, this is getting close to my actual job. <laughs> Just saying. You design starships? No. R&D needs to happen first, whenever work starts on a new project. It's a natural stalling point, since we need to make so many big decisions. In this case, we're talking about looking at our existing fleet of ships and using data we've gathered to see what consumers want. But of course, each member of the R&D team can interpret that data to suit their own confirmation bias. I'm guessing that's what we're seeing here. Sure. Why not? Excellent. I'll send word ahead to the project lead, Jules Degante, that you're taking point. They'll all be instructed to listen to you and follow your direction. I expect big things from you, so I'm excited to see what you manage to deliver. I don't believe you'll let me down. Okay, for this quest, having some skill in persuasion is advantageous. Which I do have... One rank in persuasion. Mm -hmm. So it's not nothing. And there's always, like, Hippolyta and Paramore. I don't use chems on this character. Well, then there's alcohol. Gave up my room <laughs> in the lodge so Andresia had a place to call her own. Everyone needs space to let their thoughts run I can have a conversation. Hello there, Vasco. Greetings, Walter Stroud. How may I assist you? Uh, no, I don't need anything. Just, uh, checking in, seeing how you're doing. At present, all systems are functioning well within established parameters. Right. Well then, keep up the good work. Affirmative. One of the conversations between Vasco and Barrett at the launch. I would be more Just useful to you hilarious. aboard your ship than idling here, awaiting tasks. I'm aware of Vasco, but there's not enough space on my ship right now. Yeah, you don't have the crew capacity. Yes, you need me? No, not really, Andresha. I want to jump up on the ladder and jump up to the railing. At this point, I don't care what you have to do to get that project back on track. Within reason. <laughs> Alright, um, I have some materials on me, I believe, so let me go drop those off. Not a whole bunch, but, you know, they're already on me. I might as well, right? I'm sorry, did that say I only have 12 digipix left? Did I misread that? Yes, 34. I misread that. 34. That makes more sense. I think I have a couple of hundred on my old, yeah, but... oldest character, who feel... is, like, level 120. Yeah. Or was it 121? Yeah, I think it was 121 now. I'm not... <laughs> I'm level 23. Uh-huh. Hmm. Alright, so I need to go to their star yard. Which I, I love the smell of getting back into the harness. Isn't it in the volley system? 
believe it is. Isn't that either Bullseye or Narion? Escape trajectory yeah. plotted. I know I've been there. Even with this character, I've been there. Like, Trident, Trident is in Cheyenne. Right. Um, Orbit locked. I feel like I'm forgetting an entire Ooh, star yard. You just you look are. at that view. Hope Tech. Yeah, they don't have a star yard, they just hope Town. Marion, apparently. And also Tayo, but they're based out of Neon. I need to get a better engine for this ship. It's getting ridiculous. You mean reactor? Reactor, yeah. Like, I don't even have a two-thirds of my system powered up. Let's see what there is to see. Anybody else gonna come in to say hi? Unknown vessel, welcome to Stroud Eckland. You are clear yeah. to board. Have you ever tried Aurora? Uh, uh, well, have heard them I, I have programmed in not, not in a long time, name? sweetheart. Not since you were born. What was it like? Terrible, terrible. It was terrible. You stay away from that stuff, Cora. Trust me, it's the worst. Like, they could have called you Razor Leaf. Yeah. Yeah, because I actually have a dock ship. Yeah. The board is clear. We're docked. The funny thing about the whole um, conversation between Sam and Cora about Aurora, the way my parents did it is that they never told me that drugs were bad. You can see if you can uh, have your ship upgraded. Everything's here. so yep. new here. That is a good point, I'm although a little poor. And on behalf of Stroud Eklund, we have a state-of-the-art R and D department here. State-of-the-art star yard. We are creating revolution. These ships are nice, but ships. compared to a dragon, I wasn't Thank sure if it was a. Don't tell Walter, but his star yard is pretty incredible. He's no empty suit. That's the god's honest truth. A pleasure to meet you. Well, we may be new, but I, I can't think you'll see why everyone's talking with about us. This, uh, as well as. Like... Thank you. So, what yeah. sort of ship are you looking? Yeah. Okay. Because I know some star sure yards you, you have to go to a kiosk instead. All right. Upgrade ship. Reactor is currently gray, which means that any of the reactors here aren't going to fit. But that doesn't mean that they have mm -hmm. bad reactors. Gee. Maybe. Reactors. I'm currently at 20, for reference. Mm -hmm. So they at least have 23s. Yeah. It's three extra pips. That's probably worth it, to be honest. Um, the ones that are grayed out require more sh starship design? Yeah. Yep, yeah, that requires rank 4. I have what rank about the, 0 uh, or 1. 1. The one with 29 at the bottom. Do you have, uh... Piloting rank 4. Mm. I think I'm only rank 3 on piloting. Because so I can use class B stuff. Mm-hmm. But the Class B reactors they have are garbage on power. Yeah. So I'm thinking I'm going to pick up a 144 millimeter toroidal reactor. I mean, the Tokamak is technically better, but it's also technically more massive. Well, no, actually it's not necessarily better. This actually adds more to hull. Mm-hmm. So. But the Tokamak repairs faster. Yep. Just sort by power so you get them side by side. It's a little easier. Yeah, I suppose. The repair is faster and has more hit points, but it also adds more to mass. Yeah. The main 
reason why I'm thinking the toroidal one is that I think I might be able to... No, that's going to be too big anyway. No. Oh. oh, like that. Hm. Except. That's a little better, at least. All right. Now this whole thing. Let's look at their computer first. Oh. This just gave me a mission, apparently. Crowdeckland is only able to craft these amazing ships with a dedicated support network of miners and traders. Although, by law, we can't offer more than the standard trade authority compensation. Why not work with a company that cares? Co contact our award-winning salesman, Habershaw, for further details. Profit and satisfaction awaits! I feel sick. But I'm here. Might if as you well. need anything, just ask. The ships here really better than other star yards. In my opinion, yes. Trident and Tayo both value style Tayo. over substance in their own way. The other Deimos the is positively ancient, very set in their ways. And Hope Tech? Well, you don't look like you want a space barge. <laughs> but they have really good storage. Mm-hmm. Are you going to inquire about the delivery? Yeah. If you have your own ship, we're always looking for bulk resources. The Star Yards have negotiated a set price with the Trade Authority. Twice the market rate. All right, how's this going Once work? you have the requested resources in your cargo hold, just return to me. We'll pay you the agreed fee and we'll send porters to pick up the cargo. If you deliver the full amounts, there's a bonus in it for you, too. All right. Where do I Most contractors either represent mining companies or are miners themselves. But really, we don't care where you get the resources. So however you procure them is your own affair. All right. What are you looking for? As a first-time contractor, I'm required by law to let you know that every star yard offers the same terms. But obviously, you should deal with us. <laughs> Depending on your cargo hold size, you may need to make several trips to fulfill the order. So what we need is nickel. We need a medium shipment, 2,000 units of it. Okay. I mean, there's no reason to not say yes. So. Mm -hmm. Excellent. This invoice has the details. I think it says on the invoice that you have three years to complete the contract. So... Well, let me see like your I manifest. Have some nickel to it doesn't appear you have oh, anything to deliver. Sorry. Probably all back at, you know, crammed in that tiny little storage thing that is apparently <laughs> using a black hole on the inside. Yeah, the ammo container. Yes. Let me know if you have any problems. Remember to use your power and save. I was going to save. As, I wasn't going to remember if, to use the power, but I was going to save. Maybe a hard save. Why? Because it's before starting. Says the person who got the alert saying that they have too many saves. Mm -hmm. Although apparently that's mostly caused by the autosave. Uh -huh. Because it doesn't actually delete any autosaves. Oh, fun. It just doesn't show them. Yeah, exactly. How you tell the game to delete a save and it doesn't delete it from the hard drive or the cloud. Just in the game, you mm -hmm. don't see it there. Hello. You been leading the R&D team for long? It might surprise you to hear that no, I have not. This is actually the first project I've led for Stroud Eklund. I recently graduated with a master's degree in engineering management. I'm actually kind of surprised they hired me, but I was at the top of my class, so maybe they didn't want to lose me to some other star yard. Anyway, I'm grateful for the chance to do good work here. Where is that accent from? That's uh. almost New Zealandish. Yeah, it kind of does. Because it's not quite Australian. So you're the project lead? What does that mean? As somebody who has been a project lead for a very large number of projects. It means I'm responsible for making sure our projects are carried through to completion. I'm not the one calling all the shots per se, but I do need to ensure the people making those calls are empowered to do that within the limits the executive set for us. 
So yeah, not in my current job. My previous job, that was probably about 80% of my job was doing this. Hence the, this is getting really close to work. You must be Walter's colleague. He informed me that you'd be taking charge of Project Kepler despite the fact that we have a fully dedicated R&D staff already assigned to it. But that's okay. I'm sure that even though you have virtually no experience with this, you'll do a great job. <laughs> I actually have plenty of experience designing starships. Although I'm going to mouse over the rest. Cool, cool, cool! <laughs> I can tell you're excited to get on the work of this as I am. Oh, uh, I just assumed. You know what? I'm really sorry. I should trust Walter knew what he was doing. My bad. Even so, we have plenty of designers. As you probably know, we're tasked with coming up with Strout Eklund's next hit starship. But we have budget concerns, market research to finish, and we can't seem to agree on a design. So I guess Walter sent you to resolve these issues. Have at it. Yeah, can you tell me a little bit more about the team? Sure. I'm Jules, R&D project lead. I am, was, the one making all the big decisions. I'm sorry. I suppose I just coordinate now. You already heard from Frank. He's lead designer on the project, focused on the look and feel of the ships. There's Ella, another senior designer. She focuses on some of the more technical designs of ships. Went to school with Frank. Mike is our senior engineer, responsible for consulting on all the technical bits, the machinery, the computer systems, etc. And then there's Nev. She's here for marketing. It's her job to weigh in and sell this thing to consumers. So yeah, the role that I usually had at work would have been labeled as Mike's role of all the technical computer details. Maybe tap out quick save again, because I think you have a persuasion coming up. Oh, and I seem to have lost your attention. Nice. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We're all super glad and you're I've here, already lost right? My... Everyone, lots of work to do, but we'll get through it. Don't worry, this is going great, just fantastic. Jules, you're at a fourteen. I need you to be at a three. Right. So you're going to help us address all the issues we've been having with the budget, gathering the market data, and working out. I am familiar with the process. Let's get to it. Ah, right. So you mentioned. Let's move on to solving our budget issues then, shall we? We were charged with building the newest, hottest ship on the market, which won't be possible unless we petition the board for more money. So we have two new budget proposals. One will allow us to build what I consider to be a very sensible ship, but we'll have to make some tough design cuts. The other will allow us much more flexibility to put whatever we want into the ship. It's what I call the kitchen sink proposal. I don't love it, but it'll be next to impossible to approve. What should we go with? What kind of cuts would we have to make for the sensible design budget? It's more that we can only choose certain design elements at the expense of others. In other words, if we go with something in Mike's design, there's not enough money in the budget for what Ella wants. That's one of the reasons we haven't been able to agree on anything. So what's wrong with the kitchen sink budget? Wouldn't everyone get what they want then? While it's true we'd be able to afford to put anything and everything into that design, it's just not practical. And the board will put more pressure on us to see that it succeeds. I worry that without constraints, my team will be disincentivized to focus this ship in any given direction. And they'll try to cram in everything but the kitchen sink, hence the name. Who knows what kind of monstrosity we'd create if we tried to incorporate all of our designs? And would something that expensive actually sell? This is the point where I tab out and start talking to the other people? Uh, I mean, I can also ask this question first, but... I'd love to, seriously. 
It would be a huge win for us if we came in under or at that budget. But none of the viable designs for this project can be made for that amount. I've already rejected that budget, so I have to go to the board regardless. And since you're now responsible for the major decisions, which budget proposal we go with falls on you. I mean, if you can... Oh, and I seem to have you lost can your attention. Succeed nice. at persuading for the kitchen sink budget that will get you a better ship. Uh, I think Jules is expecting really? you to talk with her first. This is not the way this uh, is supposed to go. Hey, I think Jules wanted to talk to you first. Hi, um, maybe you should talk with Jules first? Huh. No. How about you talk to Jules? When you were doing project management and you were trying to come up with a budget to propose to somebody, the first thing that you do is to talk to everybody else. Mm -hmm. You don't even consider your options well, without talking making to everybody progress first. Now, I guess. That's the... We're all super glad you're here, right, Can we everyone? Afford a new ship? Well, the repairs we are. on our old ship just keep piling up. If this keeps up, all our profits are just going to keep it flying. I know, but she's been with us for ages. We got a business to run. No time for sentiment. Well. I do like the ships we're looking at. Anyway, as I was going to make a pithy comment of, I'm starting to see how Bethesda ended up working on this game for so long and having it be so rushed because they apparently don't know how to do project design. Anyway, <laughs> um, also I figured out why she's creeping me out. Mm -hmm. Her eyes aren't smiling. That Can smile really is very fake. Which, in context, I, uh, makes sense. Still here. Oh, hush. Right. We were talking about the two budgets. Let's see if we can do I this. I know, but she's been with us for ages. We got a business to run. No time for sentiment. I was afraid you'd say that. I do Look, like the I'm the one who has to go to the board with this proposal, so before I can convince them this is going to be worth it, you're going to need to convince me. <sighs> you need to go big or go home. I know how we can sell the idea to the board. Well, I'm all ears because it's going to take a miracle to convince them. Very tempted to just use auto persuade. <laughs> I mean, you can. But I know you're a brilliant leader because you listen to others' a ideas. A smart leader knows when some ideas just aren't worth pursuing. Please, if I know Walter, he just wants this done. He doesn't care about the cost. You know, as fifty percent of the Stroud Eklund name. That might be enough. This is a good way to prove how capable you are. I'm doing a fine nope. enough job as it is, thank you. Look, I know fail. you're confident with this budget, but I know there's no way I can get it. 100,000 credits. Oh, I didn't know you had that option. Well, I do have 100,000 credits, barely. Maybe I didn't at the point I did this? You know what? Let's try it. It's just money. I can get money back. Wow. That's really generous of you. That should cover what we need. Okay. Yeah. Why not? Let's put everything we can into the design. Just the casual right? 100k. That's one problem solved. I'll go forward with that budget proposal and we can move on. Next, we need to gather some market data. The best way to do this is to outfit your ship with some sensors and take it through some real-world scenarios so we can make more informed design decisions. Why me? Aren't there better ways of gathering that type of data? Well, okay, Mr. Actually. Stroud believes you fit in our target demographic. Oh, I'm sorry. We heard about some of your adventures, and we tend to agree that getting data from someone like you will be helpful. Frankly, most of our test pilots played a little too safe, and the scenarios we run don't push the limits as much as we can get away with legally. But luckily, we don't have those same concerns with you, because you're not technically employed by us, and Walter trusts you. <laughs> Alright, tell me what to do. Great! Just pick up a mission or two at the mission board, and proceed like you normally would. We'll collect the data when you return. If you take on a variety of missions, we can build a ship to handle a variety of scenarios. But, if you just fly one mission, we can build a more focused ship. It's up to you. In the meantime, you might also want to talk with the team, get to know them, give feedback on their proposals, etc. Good luck out there. Okay. 
Sorry, Della. So, you're Walter's friend. I know he chose you to head this project as some sort of favor. Honestly, as senior technical designer, I was hoping to receive that honor, but um, uh, there's always next time. Regardless, I'm excited to help you out. Do you have any experience building spaceships? I mean, I wouldn't say I'm a professional at this point, but you know, I'm apparently going to say that anyway. This is wonderful to hear. I hope for all of our sakes that you are not overselling yes, your ability. Now, I know you've been asked to give feedback on our design proposals. Would you care for a brief synopsis of mine? Can you tell me more about yourself first? I'm the most senior designer on this project, for one. Despite all the acclaim he gets, I actually referred Frank to his current design position. He and I were in the same design program when we went to get our degrees back in uni. We support each other as friends as much as possible. Even when we disagree, I love my job here. But I dream one day of working for a small startup or running my own design firm so I can work on custom ships instead of mass-produced products. All right, so what sort of ship did you have in mind? Of course. But first, let me ask you this. What pilot demographic is currently being underserved by the current starship market? <laughs> I mean, I am an explorer. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, finally, a kindred spirit operating on my own wavelength. That's because I can you read see, your thoughts. While many Same. ships will operate to that end, few ships are designed with exploration as the primary goal. It is my belief that if we build a ship with that in mind, Strata Clint will dominate that market sector. It's my hope that we can jumpstart a new era of affordable, accessible space exploration fueled by ordinary people like you and me. Mm. That's ordinary. Yeah. That's like a bunch of boring stuff for nerds. But, but, oh. How would I design a ship like that? I'd start with a small ship profile. It won't need much storage or passenger capacity. Then, of course, you would want an advanced grav drive to reach deep space and plenty of energy for extended flights. In order to keep costs down, it likely doesn't need expensive weapon systems or defensive measures. It won't need those where it's going. And of course, high-end scanners and other scientific equipment is a must. I mean, it would be a niche product because you couldn't use it for anything else. Mm. Like, if you increase the cargo capacity, that actually sounds perfectly reasonable. Mm -hmm. But, or if you added weapons on there, you could use it for both exploration and defending yourself. But this is a single-use ship, basically. Mm -hmm. Which, I am an explorer, but... There's an awful lot of fighting involved in exploration. Yes. Especially with the starboard. Mm -hmm. It does seem like it would be a very yeah. nice product. Good chat. Yeah, that's what Jules said too. But at least that gives me something to think about. Thanks. I'll refine the idea and propose it next time, I guess. What do you think of the company? Why do I feel like answering this could be a trap coming from someone who was sent here by Walter to step in and take over our project? Ah, it's not like I have anything to hide. I used to think working for a super wealthy corporation would be terrible, but honestly, it's pretty great. They've been good to me, and the stability is way better than any startup. I've had opportunities I wouldn't have anywhere else, so yeah, pretty great. Oh, what's your job entail? Well, as a senior designer, I'm trusted to work on some pretty important features on these ships. Most of my work is on the technical features, designing them to be more user-friendly. Computer systems like navigation, targeting, you name it. It may not be as glamorous as what Frank does, but without me, 
These ships would be almost impossible for the average consumer to actually use. Okay. Bye. This is I mean, going great. Just fantastic. This quest is a bit boring, but the reward is worth it. All right, Frank. You know, I have designed spacecraft for over 10 years. So, you must have really impressed Walter for him to give you this project. Or maybe it's a bit of nepotism. Maybe Never both. mind that. <laughs> Perhaps he sees in you what he sees in me. So what do you think Walter sees in you, us? My hope is that he sees the passion in our work. In truth, I know he values me, but he has yet to truly cut me loose from the corporate reins and let me do as I wish. But I understand Walter has given you much greater control of our project. Perhaps I can learn from you and convince him I'm ready for the same. Calm down, Johnny Ive. Can you tell me about yourself? As a designer, I see the beauty in our craft and deliver that to the consumer. My desire is to make flying in our ships a joy to all the senses. I have won awards. I am proud of my work. But I do not like to brag. Rather, my goal sure is to change that? the board's perception of employees like myself from mere cogs in the corporate machine to value us as artists and let us do as we please. So I did nail it. He is a parody of Johnny Ive. Johnny Ive hmm. references the lead designer or formerly lead designer of all of Apple's products. Mm -hmm. The not technical designer, but user aesthetics and so on. Mm -hmm. He's the person famous for designing the iPod and iPhone and the earbud things. But anyway, um, yeah, this is straight up a ripoff of him. Jules asked me to give some feedback on your ship design proposal. Well, let's hear it. Ah, yes. At least you may be more open to my ideas than my colleagues. Maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Imagine a luxury craft designed for the most discerning of tastes. Every feature designed for comfort and peace of mind. High-end performance. Precision engineering. A spacecraft for those who wish to be seen. This will be the most elite personal craft on the market. They already have... The Narcissus. Yeah. That's a Stroud Eklund ship. Oh, it is a Stroud Eklund ship. Yep. Okay. So how would we design that ship like that? The ship should be mid-size, spacious, but not bulky. We'll want to build it with the highest quality, most expensive modules available. It should feel safe, but not threatening. Focus on defensive measures, not aggressive weaponry. Above all, you should be able to picture your favorite celebrity, or Walter himself, flying this ship and influencing others to buy as well. But that's what Trident Shiplines does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've had better ideas come out of paper dreams. Talentless smartasses monthly. But yeah, you need to define your pitch better because you're just making vague ideas. You haven't actually said much of anything other than ship size. Hmm. An expensive. I think I understand yes. what you mean. It is not enough to say it's a high-end luxury ship. Who is flying this ship? Where do they go? What is their story? And why do they crave such attention? Oh, thank you. I will think on this and improve on my proposal. So, what's going on, Frank? Why are you so defensive about your design? Because I am the lead designer on the project. It is literally my job to design it. It is frustrating because I keep getting pushback. And Jules has this idea that we will make a better product by designing it all together. Since everyone has equal say, it led us to a standstill. It was much easier before. Are we waiting for something in particular? I didn't even wait that long. Yeah, that was 
way too fast. So why work here if you seem so unhappy with the way things are? Just because I do not like how corporate we have become doesn't mean I don't like getting paid. Fair. Besides, with every successful ship I design, I believe I can influence the company to shift away from typical corporate bullshit and back to taking risks by pursuing art and innovation. Then again, here we are. So, what was that about wanting to sell the ship to celebrities? Why is that so... Two important? words. Conspicuous consumption. Are you familiar with this Unfortunately, concept? Unfortunately, yes. Of course you do. I'm glad you understand. Imagine someone like Borealis stepping out of one of our shining luxury ships. Everyone would want to look that cool. Not only would I have the chance to work on a dream ship, but that kind of exposure is guaranteed to sell it. It's the iPad, iPhone effect for reference. And Borealis is the lead uh, designer of the music in um, the Astro Lounge. Like when the previous episode, when we looked up and saw somebody up in a bubble at the top, that's Borealis for reference. We find out more about her if we went through the, um, whatchamacallit, all of the stuff that's in Neon, but we're not doing that. Anyway, this guy sucks. Hmm. See you. Um, hi. <laughs> Need something? So you're the noob. Oh, and for reference, um, addressing what said before, if you are trying to be a project manager, you do want a group of people to help design whatever project you're doing. Uh, it's considered a one pizza meeting, which is you should have a group of people no larger than what a single pizza can feed. <laughs> okay. Anything more than that is too many people. But generally the problem is you can't get that many people to agree on toppings. Correct. So you're going to have to end up with at least two pizzas anyway. <laughs> and the general phrase is two pizza, but... So, you seem a little on edge. Is there something wrong? Oh, no. Well, it's just... I'm a little new here, and everyone's got these big, flashy designs. And I'm supposed to come up with one too, but like, I don't know if it's as good or like, good at all, even. You're probably right, but, you know, I need to listen to you anyway. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, nothing I've heard so far has blown me away. That is true. Can I tell you? Part of me was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> so, I was thinking that we could really use a recreational craft in our fleet. But not, like, super luxurious like our Adonis Pleasure Yacht, something marketed more towards families. Something mom and dad could pack up and take the kids on vacation. <laughs> you probably think that's stupid, right? What would it take to design a ship like that? Hmm. I haven't thought of all the details, but I'd imagine lots of passenger space would be a top priority. A mid-sized ship with enough room for one... Mm. Or maybe even two or three families to spread out and relax. I don't think it'd need any fancy weapons or scientific equipment, so it should be pretty affordable. Families don't want to spend a fortune, so keeping the cost low will help guarantee plenty of sales. Do you really think that kind of ship is in demand? I used to go off-world camping with my family when I was a kid. The other families we met always complained their ships weren't quite adequate for family vacations. They never had enough room, and the kids would always fight. I've done some market research, and like, no ship manufacturer seems to be making ships for things like this. Which means even if the demand is low, we can fill this niche and still sell a lot. That's actually a reasonable mm -hmm. concept. Yeah, and having enough space... Yes. It's important. Enough space, enough passenger capacity. You did market research to see if somebody else was doing this, mm -hmm. which is important. Uh, that actually sounds like a really good idea. It's unique and fun. Oh, really? Wow, I am... <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm really glad I told you about it. Well, if we end up making it, I swear I'll work up a hell of an ad campaign for it. So, what's it like doing marketing for a chip manufacturer like this? It's... interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm new, and I've never done anything like this before coming here. M marketing for ships, specifically, that is. There are so many things to think of for different demographics, like style, features, cost, and all that. And you also need to think about offensive and defensive capabilities, because space is dangerous and mm -hmm. people need to feel like the ship they're buying is safe. So, you mentioned you were new. What did you do before this? Yeah, I've only been here for a few months. I did a little marketing for chunks before this, but it was really more of an internship. <laughs> Ships are, like, totally different than that. Yes, I applied for the job here on a whim because I thought it'd be fun. I never expected to be hired. <laughs> are you the one responsible for the drunks advertisement campaign? <laughs> feed your face to feed your body. <laughs> you like working here? So far I do. But, um, <clears throat> just between you and me, I feel like I'm in a little over my head. I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. But my bosses really seem to like my work, so... I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm doing something right. Welcome to Imposter Syndrome. <sighs> I still feel weird pitching ideas to people who have been at this for so much longer than I have. That's more like my current job for me. <laughs> <laughs> Catch you around. All right. Mike? Time to read your brain. I'm wondering if we need another chef in the kitchen. Then again, I hear Walter brought you in to finally make a decision around here. These ships are something else. Well, what do you expect? The Evelyn family is loaded. Then, uh, well, how do I put this? My co-workers are, are smart people. But between you and me, they're in way over their head with this project. Uh, Jules especially. She's new at being a project lead. And has insisted we design by committee, so everyone's voice is heard. Admirable. But no one could agree on anything, and we're running significantly behind because of it. Well, I guess I'm glad to be a service then. Good. Just so long as you don't push us to make anything too nutty. <laughs> I think your decisiveness will put us back on the right track. Speaking of which, I think my plan will get us where we need to be as quickly and efficiently as possible. It's simple, no frills, and most importantly, won't cause me any major headaches on the engineering side. So, it sounds like the project's harder than the engineers. What's up with that? Ah, oh, let me tell you. All the creative minds around here are so concerned with designing the most innovative and fancy ships possible. They never stop to think about the kind of work it takes to do that in a reasonable time frame. Yes, we're engineers. Our job is to make the bloody impossible possible. But that doesn't mean it's easy or practical. That and there's never enough of us to go around. Ah. <sighs> Couldn't figure it out from the engineering talk. I'm an engineer, mate. It means I'm the one who's got to put together all these plans and actually make the bloody ship fly. Been doing it for going on 25 years at various star yards. <laughs> they still haven't realized this place would fall apart if not for me. And instead of letting me get to my work, they keep giving me fancy new titles and got me tied up in endless meetings like this one. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of tech people answering that. Mm -hmm. It's truth, and we need it. The others believe we need to think big and innovate. Reality is, we just need to do what we do better than anyone else. So I'm thinking, there's loads of fighters. No sense in mucking about with that again. And we've already got one of the best luxury liners in the biz. What I figure is, the cargo running business is booming, and no one's quite built a personal craft like that to serve the working class folk. Nothing fancy, no frills. Just a simple, sturdy, inexpensive ship with cargo room up the wazoo and make it so easy my cousin's little moppet could fly it. 
All right, seems simple enough. Any other design considerations? Our objective should be to build a huge ship with plenty of cargo room while keeping the cost low. Doesn't need fancy equipment, just the basics. Basic weapons, basic defenses, basic scanners. You get the idea. If we go with a design like that, I can focus on quality construction and the ship will practically sell itself. All the proposals we've got, that's certainly one of them. I'm not sure if it matters what you choose here. I mean, he is on the right track with the idea. Mm -hmm. Just... It is not quite to the goal. Yeah, the problem is that you have to be able to market the product. Mm -hmm. And you can't market something that boring very easily without a proven track record, which you don't have. Mm -hmm. Wait, really? I was expecting we'd have to argue a bit more than that. <laughs> well, that's a relief. I hope you're being sincere. Because if I can convince them to go with mine, it'd save us all a lot of trouble in the end. What do you think of Stroud Eklund? I assume you mean the company and not the people. Because even if I didn't already think so, I'd tell you that both Walter and Issa are great. The company is still kind of young as far as Star Yards go, but it seems to be going in the right direction. Despite what it may look like. I've been doing this for a while at other Star Yards, and so far, we're avoiding a lot of the mistakes some of the older corps have made. Good thing well, we ain't in a big yeah. hurry, right? Seriously? Nope. Not really. I like to think I don't have the ego for it. I've got nothing to prove, and I don't rightly care to make my mark on the industry. But all I want to do is build the best damn starships I can, not get bogged down with all the excess particulars. But upper management loves the work I do. They wouldn't let me say no to this. I guess they needed someone to keep everyone's heads out of the clouds. So here I am. That is something a lot of tech people tend Maybe to say. Maybe the venture then. <laughs> yeah, that's me, isn't it? Been here since the start of the company. Done engineering for going on 30 years total. But I keep telling them, it's senior, not lead engineer. I've got no interest in being lead. Too much management. Not enough tactile work. <laughs> and yet here I am. Resigned to my fate on the R&D team. That is almost word for word what my boss told me last week. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hope we didn't scare you off, huh? Alright, we need to go do things. Yep. Ah, I need to give feedback to Jules. You can give feedback. Hmm? It's optional. I'm actually kind of... That data from your ship okay. is going to be critical to our design you process. Use your power. Assuming you. we'll chat again soon, okay? Well, we're making pro... Oh, yes, I actually do have a proposal. I wasn't really expecting you to give me feedback, but why not, I guess. I'd like to see us branch out a bit more in the Starfighter market. Bounty okay. hunting and mercenary work are both big these days, especially among the hard-blooded free stars. A lot of demand for starfighters in the consumer market? I'm glad you brought that up. No, and yes, there's a lot of work out there that requires a capable fighting ship. But the real success comes from UC military contracts, which we would hope to attract by building a higher end version of this ship platform for them. So, how would we design a starfighter like that? We'd want to give it strong weapons, tough defenses, plus good speed and maneuverability. Most Starfighters are fairly small, and the tricky part is keeping costs down with all those fancy modules. <laughs> Just a really bad idea. But the pitch is pretty awful, actually. Because all you're saying... You're trying to gear a product toward consumers, but all you've been talking about are... large government organizations. Mm -hmm. You could be right. There's got to be a better way to pitch the idea. I'll give it... Okay. Ah, we'll talk later then. So, missions. We missions. have five minutes left. Yep. Let's take a look to see what missions we have. The problem is that I don't have transport capabilities. Yeah, you don't have... No, I space. don't. Mm -hmm. 
So I can't actually do those quests right now. What if you switch to Wanderwell? Doesn't it have passenger space? Um, let's take a look. Talk to Haversham. Yep. To... Are you ready to do some business? Of course. Just looking at where is passenger on here anyway? It isn't listed. Ah. Does that make you need to talk to Barrett? Well, no idea. The mission's changed. Yeah. And I don't have passenger space there either. Mm. I do not have any ships with passenger space. Then you throw in Walter Stroud. Nice to see you again. Let's get you set up. Which one do you want to add it to? You can remove it later if you... Yeah, let's just edit. Okay, so we need to add, which is G for some reason, Hub. We need passenger slots. And two is the most that I'm seeing so far. Green. Yeah, but those are two by two halves. Yeah, I know. Looking at our options. Three, two, three. So a two by two, no. It'd be better to just do a two by, uh, two, two by ones at that point. Mm -hmm. All in one berth, I guess. There is no difference between these two. Oh, apparently if I click on it, I get this. That would have been a lot more helpful if I would have mm -hmm. Living quarters. What's the difference between the all-in-one berth and I'm living not sure. quarters? Ugh, this thing is so huge. Am I even going to put it? Uh, I would lift up all of the upper components to the next level and stick it in, okay. in between. What's the easiest way to do that? Um, I'll hold them to move and then hit R. That'll have to do. Hmm? I have so little money right now. <laughs> yeah, because you gave it all away. Yep. And now I need to talk to Sam. To ships that give Tayo a run for his money. Okay. Have you seen this? Map? It must have cost new, a new set of missions. This place so no, the same set of missions. Weird. Astro space is still listed at zero. Oh, I haven't switched. Fast. Okay, that's why. Ah. Yeah, that would be. Maybe the venture then. Stroud Eklund may be new. A wise choice. Okay. Habershaw's in the showroom. Okay. So that requires four passengers. I only have two passenger space. So I'd have to throw in another module into there, which is an option. Mm. I think I'm going to, though, because I don't think there's any passenger you're ready to buy. two. I... I haven't seen one, at least. Well, they do exist, but... Stroud Eklund may be new, but it has... Oh, you've come... Wait, 
do I have a living quarters or do I have? I think living quarters, I have a living quarters is yeah. the one you took. So but I'm gonna take the all-in-one. That way, it's two different unique mm -hmm. modules. And yes, I know I'm at an hour. I had forgotten about the timer. I because have not. ship design is something I can get lost in. This ship looks so goofy. Yeah, it doesn't look quite right, but... Nope. <laughs> Quick, shove a bunch of hab. Alright, now we can take the two missions. And we will have to do that next time. Yep. I think we'll start with the delivery mission next time. Because yeah, because that's actually a time. Also, I love the fact that we need to transfer scientists to the competitor. Mm hmm But anyway, hope you've enjoyed this internet, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.